That was an epic beginning. That's DPO. Clap! <laughs> Clap! Hello fellow anime geeks and welcome to another review on my journey to try every anime series I can. As usual, I'm organizing my thoughts by answering these four questions. And next up is another series from Spring, Mashiro no Oto. Or also, I'm not a big fan of the English translation, but the Snow White notes on Crunchy. The male tags are drama, music, school, shonen, and slice of life, and this is most definitely not a slice of life. It has a very clear, purposeful narrative. Our protagonist has a very specific goal or problem to solve. It's just another mislabeled drama. Now, this is a music anime, and our protagonist does go to high school, but it's a music anime in the way that, like, Sangatsu no Lion is a sports anime-style competition anime. Music and shogi are merely the backdrops for these coming-of-age stories. By the way, this anime reminds me very much of two anime named after months, Sangatsu and Shigatsu, so sorry in advance for all of the times you'll hear Gatsu in this video. Like Sangatsu, the art is nicely textured and more on the mature side, the lines are pencil-like, and I like that. It gives it a more realistic, kind of moody atmosphere, more than your typical like music anime. And I feel like that is very fitting for this sort of self-reflective shonen manga type story. Like Nodame and Shigatsu, we follow a musician in his internal struggle with his craft. Our protagonist suffers a great personal loss that leaves him irresolute, so he begins this journey to better understand and find his own sound. He encounters a whole bunch of other great musicians, he learns from them, and he ends up joining the Shamisen Club at his new school. But despite these cliches, this story still doesn't feel like a typical music anime, maybe because the plot also closely resembles Sangatsu. Both of our protagonists have held on to their craft as a lifeline, a means to survive in and understand the world, but they have a very difficult relationship with it. It's very tied to specific memories and people, and both of their family situations are very complicated and more than any kid should really have to deal with. With, we get clued into just how influential these connections and events have been in shaping our protagonist. But through new relationships and kindness and tough situations, tough new encounters, he is actually able to rediscover his craft. I think this different mood and approach to music anime is unique. I think the way that we began the story was interesting. It wasn't clear from the get-go that we were going to get the school competition plotline. I also really like traditional music and I appreciate that this anime not only shines a light on shamisen music but also the historical and cultural significance of the shamisen in Japan. Of course, the opening and the ending are good. They mix in the sound of the shamisen and that's another like personal favorite thing of mine when we mix pop with traditional instruments. Oh yeah, <laughs> I like this. I think the title is significant and fitting, more so than something like Kono Oto Tomare or Hibike Euphonium. Uh, this isn't confirmed or anything, but I think that uh, throughout all of the story, our protagonist was able to evoke certain memories and emotions from his audience. And I interpreted the title of the show to be something more like pure white sound or clear sound. In other words, a blank canvas for his audience to be able to paint in their emotions. And these characters feel real, like real normal people. I like that our protagonist is an introvert who suffers from sensory overload, for example. I can relate. Unfortunately, the pacing in this show didn't really allow us to get to know these characters very well or feel like their bonds were all that deep. I didn't really un even understand our protagonist. At first, he's portrayed as this kind of easily misunderstood introvert with a strong sense of justice, but then his new friends paint him as this like arrogant, snobby prodigy. I got the backstory to a central character in like five minutes in episode eight. I still don't know anything about this one guy in the group. And then we got all of these huge revelations about our protagonist just thrown at us in episode 10 before we ended abruptly in 12. So is it worthwhile? 
Well, I actually think that this anime is not bad standalone. I mean, the art and the music are definitely beautiful, but I think it's one of those anime that makes you just kind of want to read the manga, if you know what I mean. Like the, the story, the actual story looks good and the quest for our protagonist is pretty compelling, but it feels like the adaptation maybe covered it a little bit superficially. And then there's the fact that this is actually released in a monthly shonen magazine, which is the magazine that brought us Beck and Balrog room and Shigatsu, so I have high hopes that it's gonna be good. Not being able to hear the music is the only thing that um, has kept me from catching up with one of my personal favorites, Kono to Tomare. So man, if Mashiro no Oto had just emulated Kono Oto in pacing a little bit more, it would have easily been one of my top music anime. And on that note, I'll catch you in the next video. What? What? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.